What's up guys and welcome to another episode of El Jardín Perdido. Today I'm going to show you how to turn your pomegranate tree from this into this. All right. All right, so behind me is a pomegranate that uh, came with the property and I'm guessing it's at least a decade old. Um, I topped it last year and I'm not getting a lot out of it. Um, yeah, it was up near the power lines. Fruit was out of reach and uh, it still has some fruit on it, but it's not great quality. Um, not very big, really susceptible to insects. <clears throat> Anyway, I topped it and I was getting a lot of sucker growth down there, which I actually took out. And I was going to uh, also took out some of these trunks because they were kind of intertwining and stuff. And uh, upon inspection, I saw that there was a lot of damage, probably termites and other wood boring insects. And, you know, I cleared out all the suckers thinking that I can have it focus more on its trunks, but this is just way beyond repair here. Um, I'd say at least 50% of the bark is damaged. And uh, so we're gonna have to take some drastic measures, particularly with uh, pomegranate. Sorry, we got some fire ants. <clears throat> particularly with pomegranate, it's actually recommended that every 10 years or so, you take the whole thing down and let it reestablish based on its sucker growth. Not every tree can do this. Um, they might even recommend it with some stone fruit like peaches and stuff, because after about a decade, they start uh, losing their vigor. But uh, yeah, so it's gonna seem really drastic, but we're basically gonna take this all the way down and Based on the sucker growth that I previously had taken out, which I kind of regret now, um, it's gonna thrive and it's gonna be really healthy once we get rid of all the bad stuff. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take this puppy out. So I've had several circumstances in which you have to take drastic measures to uh, get something good coming out of it. And it may even take, you know, a year or so to start fruiting again, but you gotta be in it for the long haul. I mean, even me just trying to milk this thing for what it is for the past year, I've lost a year rather than, you know, doing something drastic. And uh, yeah, it's all just part of the game here, guys. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. All right, so for something like this, my tool of choice would usually be a chainsaw, um, especially because the wood on this is really hard. Since I'm not, uh, frameworking this, which would be, you know, cutting off branches really clean to maybe grab. Um, since I'm literally taking this whole thing out and I'm only relying on the new growth of suckers from the roots, um, I can be a little more crass with it. I'm pretty good with a hatchet and actually I'll show you guys a quick clip of, uh, how I went ahead and sharpened this. Um, but you know, you gotta use what you gotta use. And uh, like I said, this wood's really hard. If I were to use a chainsaw or something, it would take quite a while. So yeah, we're gonna give it a few blows with this. Also on a side note, um, I'm not gonna level it completely flat. I'm gonna have like a slight angle because uh, the root system will still be connected to that trunk. Um, one of the benefits of this is that it has a prolific root system, so the shoots and uh, suckers are gonna really come out pretty quick from that, which is good, but uh, you don't want water sitting on anything that you uh, trim because that can lead to rot and stuff. And we already have some termite problems, which also I'm gonna try to address once we uh, take this down.
I don't know if you guys could tell, but I'm battling uh, quite a few fire ants over there. Right now, I'm just gonna kind of prune up uh, some of the stuff that looks bad. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, just kind of clean up around the trunk to make sure we take some preventative measures for some of these pests. As you can see though, uh, just in using a hatchet, it's pretty clean. And then just trimming off any of the bad stuff. But uh, what we're gonna do here is rake some of this uh, mulch away from the trunk. What I'm also gonna do is uh, take the hose and power wash out in between these uh, trunks because the fire ants and everything have kind of accumulated a lot of uh, dirt and debris in there and I don't want anything else nesting in there. So as far as preventative measures for uh, pests, I have two things. The first is coffee grounds for the fire ants and the termites. Um, it interrupts their little pheromone signal or whatever, so they can't communicate and they uh, look for another place. All right, so the second uh, preferred method is this product, IV Organics. Um, it's all natural, organic, of course. Um, this is pretty much like a foliar spray. Um, if I had some on hand, I would use their paint that they have and really paint this in. Um, but what I'm gonna do for now, until I get a hold of some, is just give it a good douse of this. It's mainly kind of a foliar spray and a trunk spray for um, both sunburn and it's an insecticide, all natural of course. And so it's really helpful for like any wood boring insects or anything like that. So we're gonna have, go ahead and douse the trunk with this. Making sure I get in all those uh, crevices. So this isn't necessarily giving it a sealing coat, but it is uh, gonna deter all these insects away. Okay, so there you have it guys. Um, thanks for tuning in to another episode and be sure to subscribe um, I will be doing an update video on here, which I will later link to this video so you guys can see in full what I'm talking about here. And uh, yeah, be sure to comment, you know, if you have any questions or anything else. But yes, it looks drastic, but um, you gotta break eggs to make an omelet here, and that's what we're doing. All right, thanks again for tuning in, guys. Till next time.